Hey guys, Malfunction here. Welcome to another episode of um, The Narrative. Um, most of you probably don't know who I am, so I'm just going to give a background into about to what the subject matter of today is, which is about directing and, um, and um, originality and producers. Now, uh, I spent about almost six years um, in, the, in, I guess, late 90s, to early 2000 doing stage productions like writing my own stuff writing like three minute skits to almost like hour and hour hour and ten minute long you know full-on stage productions I've also acted in them and you know in other people's productions uh, even ones that went around the world uh, and so I have a kind of a background with stage I have a background with acting um, directing producing as well as writing and so in about 2003, I decided to go to film school here in New Zealand and in Invercargill. It was free. Uh, there was zero fees. And so, I, you know, my ex and I, we moved down there to do spend three years um, just studying hard out. And so, you know, I was taught by American uh, tutors. Uh, one of my tutors was an editor on Goodwill Hunting. So, you know, so I've got that sort of background. Um, I went before I even got there. I knew how to do uh, writing and how to do, you know, tell stories because I'd just been writing my own stuff and writing with people in mind. And you know, and actually, when you're doing stage, you're kind of like you you have to be right there in front of people, making sure that you're what you're actually talking about is delivered in a way and connects with people and it connects with uh, what the story you're trying to tell. They connect with the actors on stage because it's very. Uh, hopefully that's the right word, visceral, visceral, sorry, visceral, where, you know, where it's right there, right in front of you, you're act, connecting right away with the people, uh, whatever you're doing, they see straight away, there's no rewind, there's no uh, stop, stop and start, um, you know, there's no pauses, so which makes you really, really work hard at telling a story that connects with people, I remember doing one stage play where the next day I changed the ending, all right, we did one, we did, uh, two, um, I think it was two, uh, two plays, I think two, I mean, yeah, we put on two times, and then I decided on the third day or second day that of the performance that we were just going to change the ending to it, because it wasn't delivering the message I want, even though we'd already done it, and so, and of course, you know, this is like, with about 10 to 15 people on our, on our production, so I'd written it, I had directed it, um, and it wasn't all on me. Of course, you, when you're doing something like that, it's a team of effort. Uh, also, your actors bring their own sort of ideas to it. And also, if you're listening to people, you know, if you're working with uh, people that are on your team, you're able to get a better idea of how to make your story better. Now, the reason I'm talking about this today is because I'm finding that, like, over the last um, two decades, really, that producers have a more of a say on what a director puts out now because there's a hundreds of thousands of dollars i'm sorry millions of dollars there or you know um tens of millions of dollars involved in putting getting a film made uh of course there's a lot of cgi involved now and then you've so you've got the cgi production animation side of things as well uh you know our one of our biggest companies is weta and you know worldwide award-winning company who does a lot of cgi and stuff uh as well as doing you know uh, figurines and stuff um oscar winning of course so what I find is if you look at movie posters now, it's always like from the producer of, executive producer of this and not executive producer of this. Now what that does is that messes when you've got people who are supposed to be the money people uh, organizing how, you know, organizing how production gets set up, putting their fingers into how a film is actually made or the story, sorry, not how long it's made, but how a, the story is being told. What you're getting is People who don't actually, most, you know, majority of them don't understand film. Oh, sorry, how to tell a story. So they don't, what they do is they go and get the rights to something and they decide, well, you know, this person will do a good job with it, but they don't give their director the freedom to do their thing. So that's why you see films like Glass and films like Joker actually doing well because. They're the, those are the films based around the director's story and what the director wants to tell. 
Now, this is something I've been thinking about for almost a month now. I've been really thinking about how how to discuss it. And, of course, it's, it's a, such a big, big thing uh, to be discussing. But the most important thing on this is that when you... What we're finding is now with Hollywood, like I said, with executive producers, producers coming in and telling the director how to tell a story. What you then have is a mishmash of story that isn't actually the most important thing. The most important thing is how to convince the audience to buy into watching the film, like how to buy the ticket to go watch the film. Now, audience goes to it and goes, well, this doesn't seem like what it's supposed to be. This is not the story. So you look at uh, Tim Miller's recent uh, Terminator, which everybody basically hated. And he came across and said, well, you know, we knew we are going to upset people. We were going to change up the game. We we're going to do this and that. And he has an excuse of saying, get what go broke. He doesn't actually understand what that means. What get what go broke is, is when you try to divert people from what they want, Right. I, as an audience, if, if you tell me out that you're going to put Terminator on, that's the story you're going to talk about. You're going to talk about Linda Hamilton. You're going to talk about Arnie. You're going to talk about Edward Furlong. I want them all to have good, big parts in it. That's what the audience wants, right? Especially if you're talking about franchise. But if you just talk about standalone movies, you and a director goes, this is my story. I've written it. This is how I want to do it. But then if you have, like, too many cooks in the kitchen, which is what producers basically are, telling the you know, telling the director, well, I, th I don't think this is the way I want the story told. We've got a lot of money writing on this, right? We've got tens, tens of millions of dollars or hundreds of millions of dollars writing on this. We can't afford to go wrong. But in so doing, what they're doing is they're messing with the story from A to Z. Now, why, why do we have directors who actually win Oscars? Well, the reason for those directors is because they actually are telling the story they want to tell. They're telling a quality story, and they know what the audience will want. They know how they're going to meet, how they want to meet the expectations of the audience. The problem is that a lot of producers are all they're concerned about is money, and making sure that studio is happy. But the director knows what he wants to tell, because the director is writing on the story. His whole idea is as a director, and I've directed short films and films and so on, and as I said, on stage, and actually connecting with people that way, and actually writing my own stuff, and creating original stuff, because I want to be in control of how the story is told, how the narrative is told, right? So the narrative is most important when you're telling a story. You, if you got something like The Terminator, and you kill the main lead the whole story is about, John Connor, and you kill him in five minutes, you don't even actually do it the right way. Why couldn't you wait up until the end of the movie and do it? No, but you you kill him and then you replace him with someone else that has got nothing to do with the story. But that's because you want to add your own bit to it. And you go, well, then the director, okay, we're doing what directors doing anything. Well, if you're going to do something like that, then you need to know that you're part of a franchise where people have invested years into. They've bought into the, the merchandise, they've bought into the story, they bought into you know the product and the idea of what this is about for decades. So if, so when you have producers putting their hands in the kitchen, right, trying to get the recipe all messed up and this recipe will work, this recipe will work. Well, what then happens is that you have a mismatch of story that isn't going to work. Now you notice that recently uh, Star Wars had this whole um, people at Star Wars. Um, excuse me. At, um, at Lucasfilm, we basically had whiteboards where they were had like this is what this is going to have in this, I, and they had this sort of, you know they had diversity, inclusivity, and all that first. Now, that's not how you write a story. You write a story with who's the character, what is the story the character want, wants to be, you know what character, what is going to drive the story, right? You have a good strong character. It doesn't matter as a male or female, it, it doesn't even matter. You have a good strong cast. You have a good, strong lead, and you tell a story from that lead's point of view. What we're getting now, and why everybody that actually has been a fan of Star Wars has, doesn't like, is because they did a mishmash, right? They got a whiteboard out and said, this, 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 this will work. We need this, 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 and we'll take all the boxes. Now, a director who is given free reign to do something will basically go, hey, you know what? What is the history of these characters? 
That's the first thing you want to come and do if, you, if you're working a franchise. But if you work in a, a yarn store, you want to come and go, what, am I, what is the story I'm trying to tell? Is my story about such and such and such? And what are the struggles they got to go through to become a hero? Or because we all go to movies to see who the hero is, who the supporting cast is, who is going to help that hero when he decides, well, I can't do it anymore. What is he going to struggle through? Why is he going to become the hero that you want? When you don't do that, and you decide that you're going to add on, tick the boxes, well, you're basically throwing the recipe out, right? And you decide to just make a stew of this, right? And so what you get is a sludge of stuff. I'm a chef, sorry. So I'm going to talk in that sense. I'm a trained chef. And so so you get all the, you know, all these different, and this is what Disney's trying to do with the Wicked film, is trying to get all these little different ingredients and try to cook a gourmet meal when it actually comes out of stew, right? And stew can be nice if all the flavors work together, but it can be horrible if it's not seasoned with a good story, right? If you're not going to put a good story out, your tick boxes aren't going to work. So when you when you got producers trying to put their fingers all over it, trying to say, well, you know, you need to have a black guy here, or you need a black woman there, you need an Asian person here, you need an Indian person here, you need this person here, you need LBG character here. That's not how you tell a story. How you tell a story is you start with an idea and you build up on that idea. Not with what different characters you're going to put in, what different ethnic groups you're going to put in. And this is where producers are just messing with what the director was going to do. That's why there's so much weakness in what's coming out in the films from Hollywood. Because they're ticking boxes and not letting a good story be told first. When you're telling a story when you're telling any when you're trying to come up with any idea book or comic book whatever your whole thing is what's the story who's the hero what's the supporting cast what's the conflict how are you going to get there and what's the end result that's it there's no big 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 fancy way of doing these things this is a simple 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 way of telling a story now uh, there's so many directors that come out and said, look, I'm they, they're leaving productions, right? Recently, um, Doctor Strange left, uh, the director of Doctor Strange, sorry, I can't remember names, so I have difficulty with it because I've had too many head injuries, uh, concussions, and such on, but like he left because when you go into production, they want, you know, and you got this huge, um, studio and and you don't have the freedom to rock, tell the story you want of course you're gonna have a director who's gonna leave right you're gonna have lots of this happening you're gonna see it all the time now you're gonna have constantly directors leaving the, the last um last year we saw with the oscars and all that you saw people talk about agendas talking about you need this there's not enough black people in this not even ethnicity people in this not not many such and such people in these movies but that's not the point of telling a good story. You can tell a story with a whole bunch of Indians and be a crappy, crappy movie, right? If the story is not good. You look at um, Slumdog Millionaire, a horrible story, like, no, sorry, horrible setting. But the story was amazing. It connected with the people. The hero come out of, you know, out of the slums and rises to the top. Right and such and such, but here's all the struggles, and this is how we want to see directors telling the stories, the struggles of the hero or the heroine, female, male doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what ethnicity they are, and and it doesn't matter who the director is, but we want to see the director be in charge with its storytelling. We want originality. We want. Uh, even if you're part of a franchise, we still want you to be loyal to the franchise as an audience. You you lose your audience when you start pandering to certain groups over the fan base. The fan base is important if you're working with a franchise, and we all know this, everybody's talking about this, but they still don't get it, right? We don't want to see Hollywood pandering all the time. I don't want to be tokenized in the movie. I love Deadpool. Right, Deadpool is one of my favorite films from like what is it, two thousand six, five when it came out. I love it because it always comes out in May. It's always my birthday, 
and made. So I enjoy it, seeing it all the time. And you know, and you see what the great thing about it is the comedic relief and the enjoyment of the series is because there's so much fun and the director gets to have fun with it. A $58 million made $500 million, half a billion dollars, right? An R18 movie, right? Same with Joker. Smashed the, smashed the record because there's a director driving the story. If you do that, you'll get audience watching it. But now we, as I try not to repeat myself, but the problem is executive producers and producers are getting their fingers and into, whispering into the ear, this is what you want, we need you to do this, we need you to do that, or else we're not going to be able to put the money in. We need to, we got to uh, make sure that there's uh, like less black characters in for China, uh, less such and such characters for some other country. But we don't, you know, but for our own democratic, free, uh, free speech, freedom filled democratic nations, we're just going to pander to them. And I think this is the problem, and we're going to see more of this for the next decade coming. But they're not going to realize it until they lose so much money that they have to just say, "We, I think we think I think we should listen to our audience now."